Hey guys, Sock here from Socky Tech, and in today's video, we are going to be talking about One UI 6.0 camera changes and enhancements. There is a lot going on with One UI 6.0, but there are specifically some changes to the camera application, which just make it much better and more easily usable than before. So let's dive in and see exactly what's going on with details and examples. All right, so we do have a brand new feature known as automatic document scanning. So the option is in the settings. It's going to be on the top here. Now in previously, if this was enabled and if you fed the camera a document on this side, you would still have to press the shutter button to capture the document. Now there's an amazing new option, which is known as auto scan. So if you have this enabled, look at what happens when I feed the phone, the camera, a document, it is going to detect that it's a document automatically and it's gonna just capture it automatically. So look at this, I'm gonna put this right here. It says, hold your camera still and it just made the scan automatically. And then from here, I get my area where I get to modify and save that document. Of course, this is an example, so I have to hold it vertically, but you would hold it like this to get the proper alignment, even though it doesn't really matter because you can tap these buttons as you can see and fix it the way you want it, or you can tap on extract text, and that is gonna extract the text that's in the document, which is crazy. So this is part of their new AI features in the document scanning area. The next thing I wanna talk about has to do with advanced intelligence options. This is a brand new feature in the camera. So if I tap on these settings, over here you're gonna see advanced intelligence option. If I go inside, it is gonna allow me to pick between three different quality optimizations. I got maximum, medium, and minimum. Maximum is designed for maximum quality of the photo, but also reduced shutter speed. Medium is gonna be in between, so you're gonna get quality and fast capture speed, but at the medium level. Minimum is going to prioritize faster snapping of photos over anything else, even quality. So if I go to maximum right now, okay, take a look at this. I'm gonna take a couple photos here, okay? You can see it's pretty fast, but I'm gonna go back here, and I'm gonna go to advanced intelligence option, go to minimum. Now I'm gonna go back and take a look at what happens. So this is possible with that minimum, and this is specifically great for moving subjects. Do not use this option for still subjects or slowly moving subjects, okay? Only use this option if you know that you're gonna be taking fast moving objects because even though the quality is gonna be reduced, it's still gonna have fast shutter speed to get the shot without any blurs. But anytime, if you're taking still photos, make sure you stay at, at maximum to get the maximum quality of that photo and medium is gonna be in between the bottom line is you're gonna test all these different options and settle with the one that you need and also change them on demand for the type of photography you're about to do. Now, one more thing, you may have noticed that when you go to the settings, you don't see the scene optimizer setting. It actually is under advanced intelligence options as well. So when you tap it and you scroll down, you're gonna see the scene optimizer that you can turn on and off based on your needs. So that is fantastic as well. It is still here, just reposition. Now the next thing I'm gonna show you guys is something I really, really enjoy, and that's the way the new layout is designed. It looks very similar to what we have before, but you can see to switch between 12 megapixels to 50 or 200 now is a standalone option. And when I tap on it, they're more pronounced, easily identifiable. So I can just switch to 200 megapixels, as you can see. Or if I tap this, I can go to 50 megapixels. Or I can tap it and go into uh, 12 megapixels. But this is the new layout to switch between different megapixels. And then what they did was they put the aspect ratio separately as well. So when I tap on this one, I can also pick from different aspect ratios, as you can see. 16 by 9, or I can do uh, the most popular 4 by 3. Now this change also reflects very nicely to the video. So if I go to the video, 
Now I have the ability to pick the resolution and the frames per second on this little control panel. So I can tap here, okay, 8K, I can do 4K. If there's a 60 option, that's gonna show up. I can just switch back and forth so much more easy as opposed to the last version. Uh, when you have a control panel like this, for a very important setting like this, it makes a big difference, especially if you use your camera all the time. And again, the aspect ratio is going to be right here. You can go from full, one on one, or 16 by nine. That is fantastic. And of course, all these options also translate to pro video and pro photo. So if, if you go in here, you're gonna see the same exact thing. Okay, all these are great changes for One UI 6.0. Now this next thing has to do with the new camera widget. So press and hold on the screen, go into the widgets, all right? And then scroll down and go to camera widget and look at the amazing camera widget that we have. I can grab this and just drag it and drop it right here. And then I'm gonna get a bunch of settings. I can say video rear, all right? Tap on save. And then I can choose the starting mode for the camera when I tap on the widget. So I'm gonna use rear cameras. I'm gonna to go to video mode, okay? And then what I can do is I can, I can save these pictures or videos to whatever album that I want. I can have individual albums for individual widgets. And then I can choose a background widget image. I'm just gonna use the standard over here, tap on save. So basically what happens is, when I tap on this widget, it launches the camera, the rear camera, in the video mode, okay? And again, I can create as many of these that I want. So let me go back here uh, to the camera. And again, I'm gonna dump one right here, and I can recreate one with a different starting mode, with a different title, with a different background image, and I can save it in a specific album of my choice by tapping here. Now the next thing I'm gonna show you guys is gonna be accessed by tapping the settings button. So when you're inside the camera, you tap on the settings icon right here, and it's gonna take you to the settings. And what you wanna do is you wanna scroll down and you can see the watermark option, okay? Now watermark option has been here before, but it has now been enhanced with additional capabilities. So basically when you take a photo, it is gonna add a watermark onto that photo and that watermark can be fully customized. But with One UI 6.0, you are able to reposition this watermark. So at the bottom, you can see we now have a top and bottom alignment, as you can see. Now let me show you a quick example. So if I go back to the camera and if I take a photo and if I go inside, you can see we have a watermark right at the bottom over here. Now back in the camera, if I go to the settings and if I go down and tap on watermark and just go down over here, I can align this to the top and to the center if that's what I want based on maybe what I'm taking a shot off, okay? So now I'm gonna go out and I can take a photo and I'm gonna go inside and you can see the watermark appears on the top. Now one thing to understand is if you have your phone in the landscape orientation, the watermark is still gonna be on the top. If you have your phone in portrait orientation and take a photo, the landmark is gonna be on the top of the portrait shot. So that's very smart, but that's the new option you have. You can have it on the top. And do know that you can come back to the watermark settings, tap on edit, and you can change the name of the watermark that you want appearing on top of the photos, all right? Let's keep it like this. Let's go to the next stuff. Now there is another change in the settings. So if I tap on settings and if I scroll down just a little bit and I go to advanced video options, this menu is gonna look just a little bit different. You can see we now have two options on the top that were previously bundled together, but this is the high efficiency video format. You can tap here to change the actual quality of it. I would just prioritize the video quality, but if you want the most compatible, it's gonna be right here, okay? And then we have the high bitrate videos and HDR10 plus video options here if needed. Again, it just looks a little bit different than the previous version. They have bundled these two together and separated them from this option on the top. So there's no new features, just some rearrangement in the settings menu.
Now there's also one more cool option here. If you go over here and if you swipe down, you have this option that says swipe up and down to switch cameras. So if you enable this, that's the default on all other models running below One UI 6.0. It's just turned on by default. So basically you can swipe this to change the cameras as you can see, okay? But if I tap the settings, now I have the option to turn that option off so you don't accidentally switch cameras when you don't need to. So that's a new option as well. It's great. All right, so that brings us to the end of this video. These are all the changes with One UI 6.0 directly related to the camera. Any questions, comments, or concerns, drop them down below. Let me know for now, guys. Have a fantastic day.